Good morning, church. I was glad when they said to me, come, let us go into the house of the Lord. I know we're a minute ahead right now, but that's okay. Uh, we don't need to panic about that. Uh, today is uh, the birthday of the church, uh, the, the, uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit given to the apostles uh, 50 days after the resurrection. And uh, that is what we celebrate today with Pentecost. So some of us are wearing red or orange or fiery colors, and, and some of us are wearing blue because we are celebrating our high school graduates today as well. So um, we are thrilled about all of those different things. And we are going to kick this worship service off uh, with uh, the handbells playing This Little Light of Mine. Good morning, church. Welcome to Epworth. My name is Janet McCauley, and I'm so glad that you're with us today. A special welcome to visitors and to friends who are joining us online. Online viewers, we hope that you'll say hello so we know you're here. We have connection cards in our bulletins and online as well as a way for you to check in with us. Whether you are with us in person or online, whether you've been here many times or just a few, I want to know that when, you, when our time has come to an end, you have worshiped the Lord with friends. Come and worship. And now, please rise if you are able for the singing of our opening hymn, God of Grace and God of Glory.
The call to worship comes from Joel 2 and Acts 2. And in the last days it shall come to pass, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your old shall dream dreams, and your young shall see visions. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all gathered together in one place. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire, distributed and resting on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Join me in the opening prayer, please. God of grace, you sent the promised gift of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles and the women, upon Mary, the mother of Jesus, and upon his brothers. Fill your church with power, kindle flaming hearts within us, and cause us to proclaim your mighty works in every tongue, that all may call on you and be saved. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If the children would join me on the steps, please. Come on up. We'll sit over here away from the flowers. We don't want to smash the pretty flowers, okay? Scoot on over here. Hop, hop, hop. Come on up. All right. How is everyone this morning? Full of energy. Wow. Golly. Has there been anything exciting going on today? I thought we'd talk about celebrate. Yeah, we got lots to celebrate, don't we? Absolutely. You're back from vacation, and we're glad you're back. Julianne, I waited till you got back to find out about archery. What happened at the Nationals? Um, so the Ripley Middle School team placed ninth out of 267 schools. Wow. Great. And how did you do? I shot a 265 out of 300. Sounds good to me. I don't really know a lot about that, but it sounds good to me. Oh, something else about you. I know something else. Let's just brag a little bit on Julie Ann. I saw where Julie Ann had, she was honored at the Board of Education meeting on, was it this past Thursday? For having the highest iReady score out of all the seventh graders in the county. Wow. <laughs> what was your score? Um, for reading, it was a 702. 702. You must like to read, don't you? Do you like to read, Clarissa? I figured she'd say no, but <laughs> you like to read. That's good. Has anything exciting been happening in your life, Clarissa? Well, tomorrow we have a big rainforest thing, and the whole school comes to our classroom. The whole school's coming to one classroom? Well, not at the same time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Oh, they don't get to come? Oh, that's right. They have to go to Cedar Lakes, don't they? Vivian, anything happening in your world that's exciting? Nothing? School's almost out? That's exciting? Well, let's see. I wrote down some other things here, too. Um, let's see. The last couple days, the, uh, girls state, the girls' high school track team has been at the States, and there were only seven girls that went. 
Tiffany Fisher is here this morning. She was one of those seven girls. All seven girls placed, and the team received 10th place out of the state. So congratulations, Tiffany. And then, well, uh, Kirkland's not here, but I was going to say I watched him in a music program Thursday evening, and he did such a good job singing. He was great. And let's see. Um, ah, baseball team starts their regional play tomorrow at Cabell Midland. If you can't make it there at 7 o'clock, at least say a prayer for them that we come out with no injuries and maybe a win. <laughs> and if not, you can come out on Tuesday here at home and watch them at 7 o'clock. Okay, that's a lot to celebrate, isn't it? Yeah. Yay! celebrate. I even wrote it on here and I kind of made tried to make it festive and orange. I'm getting it all over my hands. But does anybody know what, what we're celebrating today? Okay. Did you learn that in Sunday school this morning? You already knew it? I figured you did. Okay. Did your teacher know it? Did you have to tell her? I figured. I figured you had to tell her. Do you want to tell who your teacher is this month? Patana? Uh-oh. <laughs> Telling all the secrets this morning. Oh, at least she knows it's Pentecost. She wore orange, didn't she? Oh. And well, there was ash. Well, and well, there was ash cake. Did you, were you in Sunday school class this morning? No. Yes. Yeah, you've been gone for a little bit, but you're back, and we're glad you're here to celebrate Pentecost. Can you say that? And then, well, and then we were actually um, doing. Okay. All right. Well. Uh -huh. Oh, that sounds fun. Okay. Does anybody know what Pentecost is? It's the church's birthday. Who told you that? <laughs> You're not getting any credit today. I can tell. All right. Do you know why we celebrate it? I mean, what happened on Pentecost? Do you know? That's right. And it filled the apostles with the gifts that were needed to lead the church, didn't it? All right. Do you know some of those gifts were what? Maybe wisdom, understanding, knowledge. Okay. Well, we are celebrating Pentecost today, and we're going to celebrate what else? Does anybody know? The high school graduates, yes, and look at them over there. They look so nice, Luke and Summer and Lauren. Gavin isn't with us today because he's really, really sick this morning throwing up, so he didn't feel like coming. So we're going to say a little prayer, and then we're going to celebrate our graduates, okay? All right, do you want to say happy birthday to the church just one time? Let's do it loud. One, two, three. Happy birthday. All right. Okay, let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we gather here today under your care and protection. Thank you for your loving kindness that, fought, fails, that never fails us. We thank you for those with us that you would guide our thoughts and our actions to bring you glory. Strengthen us and fill us with your peace. Amen. All right. You can go back to your seats. And I'll give Paula a second to catch her breath. She's going to also do the next part of this. Um, I wanted to mention that we have flowers at our altar today that are given in memory of Hazel Parsons, who died right around one year ago. So we've got flowers over here. Um, and what else was I going to say? Um, thank you to the people who are teaching Sunday school. Yeah, I know that there's a couple of you out there, and it's terrific. And... Uh, would you say, let me put you on the spot, that uh, teaching Sunday school helps you grow as a grown-up? Thank you. <laughs> that, that's the right answer, yes. Yes, yes, you learn a lot of things when you teach Sunday school, uh, and it, uh, it's a great way to uh, give back to the church uh, that has given to you. You got your breath again? You're ready. <laughs> All right, we are here this morning to celebrate these wonderful graduates. I'm going to ask you to come up. I think, Lauren, you're over here, and the other two are over there, Luke and Summer. And, of course, Gavin should have been here, and bless his heart. We'll pray that Gavin feels better really soon. Good job. You guys look. I can't believe you're all grown up already. 
Well, first, before we get to the high school graduates, I did want to um, recognize the college graduates, Parker Anderson, Easton Perry, and Jaden Simon. And I know Parker's out of town today, and I'm not sure about the other two. I see mom and dad up there. But um, anyway, we congratulate them and you on their future endeavors, and I know they're going to do great things. So on Friday morning, I was able to attend formal awards with you guys, and that makes me really happy when I get to do that. But what really makes me happy is when at the end, when they decide to tell how much the class of 2024 was awarded. They were awarded over $2.4 million in scholarships. I was reading some scholarship applications and I was really, I've never known anybody that had a 5.0 and there was actually a girl who had a 5.0. I mean, I've never heard of that, but anyway, that's way above me. So <laughs> anyway, I've got something I want to read to you and then we're going to start in on everything. So this morning, Lauren, and we're going to act like Gavin's here, Gavin, Summer, and Luke. It has been such a pleasure watching all of you grow up. We're so proud of each of you. Your commitment to loving God and others has served as an example for our own spiritual lives. Although we are a little down that you're going in a different direction, we're very excited to see how you will use your God-given abilities to make an impact on this world. God has a wonderful plan for you, and if you stay faithful to him, you will see that plan, that plan turn into something wonderful. He will use you to change lives, to shape hearts, and to shed light on a dark world. Remember the wise and powerful words of King Solomon in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. As you finish one chapter of your life and get ready to start a new one, Always cling to the redeeming power of God's love. High school is difficult, but trust me, life is going to get tougher, and you will experience new challenges with every step you take. You have the love of our Lord, which will comfort and encourage you during all the life's hardships. Always stay committed in your relationship with God, continuing from the spiritual foundation you have built here growing up at Epworth. We pray that you will always recognize God's presence in your life, Remain faithful to his perfect love and his brilliant purpose. We want you to keep us updated on what exciting things that you're going to do in the future. And remember, your identity is in Christ. You have the power to make a difference. In a world where you can be anything that you want to be, choose to be kind. Always do your best because God will do the rest. Remember that your Epworth family loves you and we are always here to help you in any way. Congratulations, and may God bless each one of you in your future endeavors. Epworth family, I present to you the class of 2024. Now, this is the part I always like. I ask the parents to send in a bio on their children or their grown-up children. I'm not sure what to call you guys, but they're in between children. But um, so here we go. These are from your parents and your families. And before I get started, Lisa Bailey has something she wanted me to read to each of you this morning. She says, this narrative is for our graduates, Summer, Gavin, Luke, and Lauren. I like, I, like the rest of the Epworth congregation, have watched you grow into fantastic young ladies and gentlemen. Each one of you has it, your own unique, brilliant skills and abilities. Your futures are bright. Each one of you make the world a better place just by being in it. Know that we care about you, and because we care about you, we have prayed for you. Also know we will continue to keep you in our prayers. Your Epworth family will be cheering you on as you enter the next adventure in your life. As you keep God close, remember these Bible verses. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid of discouraged or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. And behold, I am with you always. Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. Congratulations, Ripley High School class of 2024, Lisa Bailey. Now, we're going to start with our first graduate over here, Lauren Nicole Bailey. Lauren is the daughter of Chuck and Lisa Bailey of Ripley. 
Her grandparents are Charles and Janiel Bailey and Delbert and Joyce Lahan of Ripley. When Lauren was a little girl, she enjoyed Beth's Vacation Bible School so much that she would go to several Vacation Bible Schools at different churches in Ripley and also in churches out of town when we would go on vacation. For several years while in middle school, Lauren loved going to Spring Heights summer camp. There she shared with other Christians in learning about her faith and what it meant to be a Christian. At Epworth, Lauren enjoyed learning in Sunday school, going on church retreats, participating in the archery program, playing hand chimes, being in Christmas plays, being involved with youth group, singing with the proclaimers during the contemporary praise and worship service, and singing with grace notes during traditional worship. Periodically, she even ran slides during the worship service. As someone who is heavily interested in math, Lauren has participated in Senior High Math Field Day, recently placing first in the Jackson County competition. Lauren has been involved in the RHS marching band, concert band, and jazz band, and the new RHS Phoenix Blue Show Choir. Also involved with sports, Lauren has been on the tennis team, the track and field, where she was a hurdler and a runner for the cross country team. Lauren's leadership activities have included the Hugh O'Brien Youth Hobie Leadership Organization, the Ripley High School chapter of the Youth Leadership Association, a youth and government senator, and a model United Nations participant. Lauren was chosen as one of the three recipients of the Charles J. McLean Presidential Scholarship for Fairmont State University, which covers tuition as well as room and board. She plans to major in mathematics. Her mother would like to thank the members of, the Epworth, of Epworth for mentoring, supporting, loving, and praying for her. You might have been watching from afar or have a friend, a pastor, a son, Sunday school teacher, or a youth leader, a choir director, a grandma, or a grandpa. Whatever the role, she has felt your love and support, and it means so much to both of us. God's blessing to you. And on Friday, Lauren received um, the Viking Voices Scholarship, the Aryan Foundation Award, the National Choral Award, and an Epworth Scholarship. Lauren Bailey. I'm going to go ahead and read Gavin's, even though he's not here. Maybe he's watching. Um, Gavin is the son of Susan Chancy Curry and Jeff Curry, and she's also uh, he is also Gianna's older brother. His his grandparents are Steve and Claudia Chancy and John and Bonnie Curry. Gavin is extremely happy to be graduating from Ripley High School in just a few short days. Gavin was involved in Future Farmers of America all four years in high school. The past two years, he attended Roan Jackson Technical Center and completed the auto body program. Gavin has received numerous blue ribbons and awards at the Jackson County Junior Fair and has shown market rabbits, swine, and beef. This will be his 10th and final year showing at the fair. Gavin plans to get a job and directly out of high school and go to work using the training he has obtained through the vocational school and the skills he learned while working on the farm. Gavin Curry. <laughs> Summer Dawn Hartley. She was born on February 16, 2006 at Women and Children's Hospital in Charleston. She has been a lifelong resident of Ripley and attended Ripley schools. She's a member of Epworth United Methodist Church. Summer was an acolyte and she sang in the adult choir both for several years. She loves fishing with her, is it Peepaw or Peppa? Peepaw? That's what I thought. Peepaw, other known as Bo. <laughs> she is the record holder on Dalton Drive for the Dalton Drive Pond Award with catching 36 fish in one day. Kevin, you could take some lessons from her. <laughs> While here, she danced at Pam Bailey School of Dance for approximately eight years. She was an all-state chorus in middle school. Summer also played varsity football her freshman year and continued to kick and be the placeholder for the other kicker, which was a girl, as well. She studied cosmetology her junior and senior year and has already received her license. Wow. Summer's future plans are undecided at this point. She is the daughter of Dan and Megan Ellerman, the granddaughter of Bo and the late Bobby Hartley, and the bonus granddaughter of Greta Tyler. 
She also has receiving the F4 scholarship. Summer Dawn Hartley. Okay, last but not least, Luke Matson. Luke Jacob Matson, a Ripley High School senior, class of 2024, is the son of Aaron Rains Matson of Ripley and Steve Matson of Kenna. He is the grandson of David and Louise Rains and the late Donna Matson. His Epworth connection includes his grandparents, the late Oren and Virginia McAllister, and Hobart and Belle Rains. On Sunday, April 23rd, 2006, Luke Matson was baptized at Epworth United Methodist Church. He attended and participated in various areas of the church. One was that of serving as an acolyte during the worship service. He was always present when he was supposed to be there. And if Miss Sheila ever needed a substitute at a moment's notice, she knew she could always call on the Matson brothers. He participated several times in the Veterans Day parades, carrying posters of his dad, Steve, who served in the United States Army, or his great uncle, Paul Raines, who also served in the United States Army, or his great grandfather, Oren McAllister, who served our nation through World War II. Luke was always tickled when he joined the Epworth group, and those also participating or organizing remembered his name. They knew him even if he had not been in church for a while. So the commitment made at his baptism in 2006 carried forward through his young life. Like the prophet Isaiah said in chapter 43, verses 1 through 5, I have called you by name, you are mine. Luke is an avid outdoorsman. He loves to hunt with both gun and bow. He hunts any game that is in season. He has successfully taken down the deer, the squirrel, and he's still looking for the elusive turkey. When, when not hunting, he enjoys casting a line or two in the fishing rivers, creeks, streams, ponds, and lakes. Pictures of his contagious smile holding his big catch bring smiles to his family. Not to, have, not to have hobbies only in the field, stream, and the woods, Luke is known to enjoy join, joining friends on the links to play a round of golf anytime he can work it in to his busy schedule. Luke was an active in 4-H belonging to the Kenna Succeeders 4-H Club. He showed lambs for his project for several years. He won third place showman junior division 2016, his first year of competing, placing behind his brother Brock, who was the runner up that year. In 2017, Luke was grand champion showman junior division at the 2017 Jackson County Junior Fair in the Lamb Showmanship Competition. In 2018, he moved up to the senior division showmanship competition and was runner up to grand champion, making his years as a sheep showman very successful. Luke was a member of the wrestling team at both the middle school level as well as on the team at Ripley High School. He had a great success in his middle school competitions, becoming the champion of his weight class in the middle school and junior high Wood County Classic in 2020. He continued to represent Ripley High School as a successful grappler, although suffered a broken arm at the at the Winner's Circle or Winner's Choice Tournament in Fairmont in 2023, his junior year. He returned to the mat for his senior year but suffered another season injury at the WSAC tournament in January of 2024. Disappointment to not be able to finish his senior season was certainly an understatement. Lucas spent his final two years at Ripley High School studying welding at the Roan Jackson Technical Center. After graduation, Luke will be traveling to Washington State to work with his dad, Steve, on the installation of a natural gas pipeline. Wherever life leads him, his faith in his Lord Jesus will accompany him always, remembering to trust in the Lord. Luke always remembers Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Epworth family, the class of 2024, and we have a little um, gift for you there in your bag. You can, you can open them if you like, and let's see what's in them. Um, you've got really nice glasses, if you notice. We need a picture at the end with those glasses on. Let's see what's in your bags. And you can put your glasses on now. I don't care. Everybody's going to want a pair. Gosh, they're so quiet and easy. Look. <laughs> and then 
to hold those up when you get them out. You can turn around and hold them up so everybody can see them. There's a book in there from the church. Oh, right side up, too. You guys will have to tell them. I don't know. And somebody can grab a picture. Make sure you're right side up. <laughs> Now, these beautiful quilts are your quilts to take with you and remember that your Epworth family loves you more than anything. And on behalf of that, Janet McCauley takes her tireless lots of evenings. I know she takes a lot of time away from home life to make these quilts, and she just makes me so happy when she does it because I envy her. And Julia. Oh, Julia, I didn't know you had joined the ranks. Well, all right. Well, then, get up. Come here. I have a little something for you. I actually wrote in here that you could do this with Lynn, but no, do this with Julia. <laughs> and maybe Lynn, will, Jen, Lynn may want to tag along. <laughs> but we really appreciate you ladies going to all that hard work. I mean, it's amazing, and they're so beautiful. And I know that they're hand-stitched with love and care. <laughs> It, it is a labor of love. Um, and I was thinking a while ago, I probably, have I made a hundred probably Maybe. by now? I mean, we started several years ago and I don't remember, the first year was like 10. Um, and there's been several, many, many every year. Um, but it's always, it, it is a labor of love. Um, we love each, each one of you. And as you, my, my thought always has been wrap yourself in that blanket and know the love of this church and your friends. Yes, this has been a great, this was a big thought of mine a long, long, long time ago, and I have no idea how to do this, and I begged quilters to let's do this. Well, Janet finally made it a reality, so everybody gets a quilt from Miss Janet, and we love her so much. So enjoy your dinner with Julia, and Lynn can tag along too. <laughs> so thank you, boys and girls. I mean, you're great. We wish you all the luck. And whatever you decide to do, come back and visit us. And don't forget about us, okay? All right. All right. <clears throat> this has been a time of worship. And our worship continues uh, with a, a moment of prayer. Um, let us join together in prayer. Almighty God, we do give you thanks for uh, these young men and women that we have celebrated this morning. We give you thanks for uh, children that have uh, sat on these steps here earlier today uh, and for people who uh, lead them and teach them. We give you thanks for um, so many people uh, throughout the years who have, uh, who have prayed for these, uh, these young ones and who continue to pray for them. Lord, we thank you for this family, this, uh, this uh, church of Epworth, uh, the, the body of Christ uh, present here. Uh, and we, we thank you that we're a part of it, uh, and we pray that you would bless our witness, uh, however we may go from this place uh, into the world. Lord, we lift before you some of the concerns of our hearts. Uh, we know that there are individuals and family members, um, spouses, children, uh, parents, grandparents that that uh, have various conditions and, and cancers and, and diseases, and Lord, we put them into your hands. Uh, we pray that uh, you would bless each one in body and in spirit, uh, and that those of us who are watching, those who are, are suffering, Lord, we pray that, that you would give us a, a spirit of, of reassurance and, and patience and wisdom and calm, uh, that, that all of these things may be used for your glory. Lord, we pray for uh, this congregation that, uh, that we may bear your light uh, into the world wherever we go. Um, we give you thanks for the leadership that is here uh, and the leaders that are to come. Lord, these are some of the things that we uh, pray as we offer our, our prayers to you in the name of Jesus, who teaches us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hang on here. It's not just the church's birthday today. Uh, we have Danny Martin and the and gentlemen. Sing happy birthday to whomever you wish. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, Kathy. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I know I, accident, I, I really did accidentally skip Jesus Loves Me, um, and my apologies. And we continue. <laughs> Would you please stand uh, for the reading of the Gospel according to John, uh, selections from the 15th and 16th chapters. Jesus says, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, 
The spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Almighty Father, may our reflections on thy living word lead us into right and deeper relationship with thee. And may we be found to be thy disciples, reaching out to all we encounter with the love of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. So if you have your bulletins handy, uh, I want you to pull them out and, and look at the call to worship. Um, a lot of times we have uh, two separate scripture readings uh, in the worship service, and this time uh, the call to worship combined a couple different scriptures in them. And there's, there's one little part uh, in the middle uh, of that phrase, uh, that, that whole call to worship, that, that I want to point out. Um, and, and that is where it says there was a mighty wind from God. A mighty wind from God. It's, it's so easy to, to gloss over that. But, but look, it says that there was the sound of a mighty wind. Uh, and, it, and it filled the whole house. And it was a terrifying sound. It, it wasn't just a gentle breeze. It was the kind of wind that got people's attention. I don't know if you saw it, but a couple days ago in Houston, there were some pretty heavy storms, and there's this video of a three-story uh, frame uh, construction house that the wind blew over, and it, it fell, the first floor collapsed, the second floor collapsed, the third floor collapsed. We're talking a mighty and powerful wind. I know that there are people in this room that have had roof work done recently because of a powerful wind that, that came along and, and damaged trees and, and uh, it fell on the houses and things. Uh, wind is a pretty mighty thing. Um, and this is an attention-getting wind. The sound of a violent wind suddenly filled the place. Uh, and we have to take pause and, and think about that. And as I thought about uh, this wind that happens on the day of Pentecost, uh, I, I think about other instances of wind in the Bible. Um, two that come to mind. Uh, in the first verse, the first couple of verses of the Bible, we have uh, in the beginning when God was creating the heavens and the earth, uh, there was uh, darkness and void and a wind from God hovered over the, over the face of the deep. A wind from God. And that, that word there, wind and, and spirit, they, they're, they're interchangeable. A wind from God, a spirit from God. There's another mighty instance of a, of a strong wind uh, in the Old Testament when, when Moses is leading the people out of Egypt and they come to the, the Red Sea and it's there in front of them and, and a mighty wind comes from God and, and blows the water aside and, and the people are able to cross over the sea on dry land because of this mighty wind from God. So we look at those two simple examples and and we see that in, in creation uh, God in in the form of wind and in the form of of um, of spirit is is creative and is taking chaos and making order out of it God is making order out of chaos and and does this through wind and, and spirit we look at the, uh, the the story from the Exodus and we see that that God made a way for the people where there was not a way before. Uh, God used the spirit and the wind to, to save the people. So we're looking at wind here. We've got the, the creative 
order-making presence of God in spite of chaos uh, and God making a way for the people uh, through uh, the, the Red Sea. My point is that this strong wind on Pentecost uh, is, is not an isolated event, uh, but another reminder of the presence and power of God to bring order and to bring salvation. By the way, the, the gospel reading talks a lot about the Holy Spirit there. And, and like I've said, the Holy Spirit and, and wind are, are connected. Uh, from the moment of creation, uh, the wind from God sweeping across the, the waters, to the resurrection. Do you remember uh, after the resurrection, Jesus appeared to the, the disciples in, in the locked upper room? And weird phrase, I always think. It's a weird phrase. And it says, he breathed on them. He breathed on them. He was giving him, he was giving the, the apostles uh, the spirit. Uh, and then we get this, uh, this passage about Jesus' words about giving the spirit. When I go away, he said, I will send the spirit to you. So it's, it's good that I go away because then the spirit will come to you. Thinking back to Exodus, uh, you remember another sign of God's presence uh, in Exodus? was fire. Uh, where did God meet with Moses? At a burning bush. Um, and, and how did God lead the people uh, at nighttime through the wilderness with a pillar of, of fire? Uh, and then here on the day of Pentecost, we get, we get these flames somehow dancing uh, on, the, on the, uh, the apostles' heads. And y'all couldn't see it, but the choir could. We had a dancing flame uh, during the, the choir anthem back there, and that was awesome. Can we get that dancing flame again? Everybody look around there. Yes, absolutely. We have a dancing flame back there, uh, and that is good and wonderful. And all of this comes together to remind us that God is with us. God knows our needs before we ask. God is willing and able to save. God is with us. I say it again and again because it's true. God is with us in spite of chaos. Does anybody have some chaos in your life? Maybe from time to time you have some chaos in your life. Well, you're not alone and God is with you. Does anybody ever have a time when you feel like the foundation is shaking under you? It's okay. God is with us uh, and, and gives the, the spirit to be with us. God is present to take chaos and make it into order. And God is present to save. You are, you are graduating and you've got some unknown things in front of you. Uh, college and, and work and, and, uh, and technical stuff and farming. All kinds of things. And you're not alone. And God goes with you along with the supporting prayers of the people of this congregation. Uh, God is present uh, to order and to save. God is participating in the world today, people. God is alive and participating in the world today and uh, being given the gift of the Spirit on, on this Pentecost Sunday. Uh, I, I ask you, participate in what God is doing uh, in the world. Participate in, in God's presence in the world. Proclaim it. Don't keep the faith. Share it. And best of all, God is with us, and we give thanks for that. Will you pray with me? Lord God, we do give you thanks for your presence throughout history, throughout times when people are up and down, uh, when we would say things are going good or, or badly, you are present, you are with us, you never abandon us. We thank you for Jesus, the life that he lived, the death that he died, the resurrection that he had, and the ascension that he did so that the spirit could come. We thank you for your spirit's presence uh, in our lives to guide us and uh, keep us in the ways of salvation. Lord, we commit ourselves to you uh, in the name of our Savior Jesus. Amen. I would like to invite you to stand. I'm pretty sure it says stand, right? Oh, yes. Uh, we are the church. We are the church.
Amen. Please be seated. And I'd like to ask the acolytes and the ushers to get ready um, for our time of offering. We say yes to God, and we say thank you to God as we give to God our tithes and our offerings. Father God, you have given us the gift of the Holy Spirit, and we return our praise and thanksgiving by giving you these gifts, praying that all of these may be used for your kingdom, your glory, your power. Use us and these gifts in the name of Jesus and the presence and power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Next Sunday is the 26th of May, and it is one of the uh, special offering Sundays of the United Methodist Church Peace with Justice Sunday. Uh, there'll be some information on the email that goes out uh, for the church uh, during the week, uh, and there will be a uh, special envelope for uh, those offerings uh, in the worship service next week. Um, if you haven't done so, we, uh, we give our condolences to B. Eisner and her family on the death of her mother, Roberta Wilson, whose life was celebrated yesterday. Uh, so prayers for the, the B. Eisner family. Once again, uh, the flowers uh, in memory of Hazel Parsons. And once again, congratulations, graduates. Uh, we're glad that you're here and our prayers go with you. Our closing hymn, we'll sing the four verses of number 569. We've a story to tell to the nations.
And now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you.